in this uh, lecture we will study about uh, another uh, security standard in wireless networks and this is wifi protected access wpa wpa is a uh, is an enhancement and uh, it was uh, proposed to overcome the vulnerabilities of web we have already studied the vulnerabilities of web it came as a software patch and uh, developed as an interim standard this was an uh, a temporary standard to overcome the vulnerabilities of web what were the vulnerabilities of web key reuse issue then calculation of linear checksum transmission of iv in clear no key management no defense against replay attack use of same key same or static keys no mutual authentication and so on so there were some vulnerabilities in web and uh, i have uh, written these vulnerabilities here in order to overcome these vulnerabilities uh, wi-fi protected access uh, came as a software patch the first enhancement over web was uh, fast packet keying it was developed by rsa security corporation in the year 2001 and uh, here it uses a hashing technique to generate per packet keying so each new packet is thus encrypted using a unique key another uh, improvement as software patch over web was wi-fi protected access this is what uh, uh, our today's topic is and it was uh, uh, given by wi-fi alliance corporation uh, between the year 2002 and 2003 it was again an interim standard and uh, it uh, did not require a hardware upgradation in the existing 802.11 equipment so did not require hardware upgradation and uh, this wpa addresses some of the problems of web by incorporating the following primitives first is tkip then mics and the third one is 802.1x authentication tkip is temporal key integrity protocol and uh, to enhance the security of web this tkip uh, includes uh, some new algorithms the, those algorithms can uh, extend the initialization vector space and uh, also it allows per packet key construction and uh, uh, third thing it provides uh, key derivation and distribution so three things uh, this tkip is uh, providing uh, and uh, which we were not having in the web and then we have uh, this message integrity codes crc checksum in web they were uh, uh, replaced by cryptographic uh, these mics uh, in web we were using crc and that was not cryptographically secure so here we are uh, using these uh, mics which are secure and uh, it uses a specific uh, algorithm called as Michael algorithm to compute the MICs and it, it is used to defeat message forgery attack. When we have these cryptographically secure codes, then we can defeat the message forgery attacks. And uh, after that, uh, the third primitive which is uh, provided by Wi-Fi protected access is 802.1x authentication it provides port based authentication and uh, that's why it has a port based access control that provides a frame to allow use of robust upper layer authentication protocols and also it facilitates use of session keys now we will see what is this temporal key integrity protocol TKIP is a software enhancement on web protocol and works on same hardware for backward compatibility with the web devices. So it is based on RC4 algorithm or RC4 stream cipher but it uses a 48 bit initialization vector and 64 bit authentication key and 128 bit encryption key. Thus it provides more security ex against exhaustive key search. So I will draw a structure for this particular uh, uh, protocol TKIP.
So this uh, diagram shows how the uh, uh, encryption keys are generated in TKIP protocol. And here, the encryption keys are generated from the combination of shared key, this one, sender's MAC address, here it is, and uh, the packet sequence number. So this is our TKIP packet sequence number it is also known as tsc and it is of 48 bit length okay and this tsc is our iv in this case so it is instead of 24 bits that we were using in web we have 48 bits here okay so it is a combination of uh, three things uh, which we use for the generation of the encryption keys and here we are using two mixing phases, phase one and phase two. And these mixing phases, they involve exclusive OR operation and AND operations to generate the keys. Each new packet is encrypted using a new key, which therefore reduces the replay attack. Since the TSC stores the packet sequence number, so each new packet is encrypted using a new key and this overcomes the possibility of replay attacks however for that we require to synchronize between sender and receiver the received packet should have a sequence number greater than the previously received packet so, so that's a uh, requirement when we have to reduce the replay attack and when we are using tsc as iv and each time it is different Using MAC address in generation of keys guarantees every station and access point pair will generate a different set of encryption keys. And this prevents key reuse problem due to cross station IV collision. Further, breaking of mixing operations. As I said, there are two phases of mixing. So we are breaking the mixing operations into two phases and also breaking of tsc that is your sequence counter into two parts there is no direct relationship between iv and encryption keys so if somehow attacker gets the iv during the communication it is not going to uh, provide any extra information to the attacker so that is another improvement over web and uh, because of that we can send this tsc in clear without going for the encryption and further the t uh, this tsc is a 48 bit length initialization vector so it guarantees that ivs will not be reused with the same shared key okay so this is how tk tkip works then the second primitive that is provided by this tkip is message integrity code uh, message integrity code uh, here as I said that instead of uh, sending the normal CRC uh, checksum here we are uh, sending the cryptographically secure checksum and uh, for that uh, we have a message that message is sent as an input to the tagging function and as output you will get the tag and somewhere here you have shared authentication key this is shared between sender and receiver here you have sender on this side you have a receiver and this is a shared authentication key and again on the receiver side you have to use the same tagging function which was used on the sender side so here the input is received message Again, output of this will be a tag. It is denoted by T dash. And for verification purpose, what you have to do is you have to see whether T dash is equal to T. You have to check this for the verification purpose. If they are same, then either accept or reject. Okay, based on this comparison. If they are same, then you have to accept the message. Otherwise, you have to reject the message. So here, this tagging function is similar to a hash function that we use to calculate the hash and it is cryptographically secure. So here, the message is partitioned into 
32 bit chunks and uh, the last chunk is padded with uh, some zeros uh, if required if last chunk is not full if you do not have 32 bit in the last chunk then you have to pad it with zeros and then we go for number of iterations and in each iteration or in each step one chunk is mixed with key using exclusive or operation bit wise swaps and some additions so these are the three operations that are performed in each of the iterations and uh, each chunk is mixed by using the following operations the output of each step or each iteration is going to be a 64 bit output okay and uh, this is treated as your mic message integrity code and uh, this defeats the forgery attack because at the receiving end mic is again computed like uh, we are computing it here and then we go for the verification or a comparison between the t dash and t if they are same then we are assured that communication is not altered during the uh, transmission okay so this is how we defeat forgery attacks in 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 wpa which we were not able to do in the web next we have ieee 802.1 x primitive of tkip protocol it is a basically port weight port based network access control protocol and it is used to achieve mutual authentication when we go for this we achieve mutual authentication which we were lacking in the previous protocol that is web and also efficient key exchange is provided by going with this port based access control protocol it is based on three elements and these three network elements are supplicant authenticator and authentication server now what is supplicant what is authenticator and what is authentication server we have to see in the context of wireless network the supplicant is the wireless station so it is simply a wireless station or your wireless device that we are using to access the wireless network fine and uh, the authentication server authenticator is a uh, kind of a value that we have already seen while while we were studying the message authentication codes and it is a kind of value that we calculate either it is hash value it is mac value it is mic uh, or checksum that is what we call authenticated that, that basically we use to authenticate our either our uh, entity or our message then we have uh, this message uh, this authentication server authentication server is a network access uh, uh, node uh, maybe your uh, it can be your access point and uh, Th this access point allows to access the network by uh, exchanging certain uh, parameters and the aut authentication server is any server with authentication mechanism like you have uh, your uh, uh, radius server radius server radius server is remote authentication dial in uh, user service that basically we use to uh, authenticate users remotely and uh, further it employs EAP to permit variety of authentication mechanisms. EAP is your extensible authentication protocol, and because of this protocol employment, we are able to use variety of authentication mechanism, or I would say that any kind of authentication mechanism that we have available in the networking, we can employ by using EAP. And this EAP is built around the challenge response communication paradigm like we have in uh, client server communication the authentication is extensible in the sense that any authentication mechanism can be used uh, by pro, uh, by employing this eap and further this eap ha has flexibility or it gains flexibility by operating at network layer instead of using it at link layer when we use this at the network layer we have the flexibility because the network layer we are forwarding the packets so we have more flexibility as compared to the uh, link layer after that uh, uh, as this is uh, our tkip protocol is over uh, which is a software patch and uh, it is uh, uh, just to uh, overcome the vulnerabilities of web 
and uh, then uh, there are some more improvements newer uh, new versions of uh, uh, wpa that is wpa2 and wpa3 and this wpa2 is a second version of uh, wpa and it was uh, available in the air 2004 basically it was proposed in this year and the standard for this is again IEEE 802.11i so this WPA2 is governed by this 802.11i standard and it includes uh, mandatory support for CCM that is counter mode cipher blockchain uh, which helps to implement the IEEE 802.11 and further it is based on AES algorithm. We have already studied this AES, so it has a strong security uh, aspect as compared to the previous version. And in this WPA2, uh, from March 2006, certificate is mandatory for all new devices which will which will bear Wi-Fi trademark. Wi-Fi trademark became mandatory after March 2000 for all new devices so it was mandatory after that uh, there was another another version came for this WPA and it is WPA 3 it is a replacement for WPA 2 and it came in January 2018 recently and uh, uh, it was based on 128 bit encryption in personal mode so it is providing 128 bit encryption in personal mode and 192 bit encryption in enterprise mode further it replaces the pre shared concept of wpa pre shared key concept is replaced and instead simultaneous authentication was being done so uh, this is uh, all about uh, these uh, WPA, WPA2, WPA3 standards. Uh, so that's all for this lecture. Thank you for watching.